Can you all hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, fine. I'll be sharing my screen. Okay, so we'll start. Nyquist plot. We, yes, in the previous class, we had studied that if we consider a function GSHS, which is open loop transfer function, the closed loop transfer function will be GS upon 1 plus G of S into H of S. The poles of this transfer function are the roots of the characteristic equation, that is 1 plus G into H is equal to 0, and are known as closed loop poles of the system. Fine. After this, we have taken one example and understood that close uh, with the help of the example, we have we had understood that poles of one plus g into h is equals to open loop poles of a system. Poles of one plus g into h is equals to open loop poles of a system, and also zeros of one plus g into h is equals to closed loop poles of a system. You have to remember these two conclusions. What are the conclusions? Poles of 1 plus g into h is equals to open loop poles of a system and zeros of 1 plus g into h is equals to closed loop poles of a system. Okay. After understanding this, having understood this, uh, just a bit. We'll proceed. Okay. Yeah, so we took one example and understood it clearly. Now, we know that from Nyquist's point of view, somebody is waiting. From Nyquist's point of view, the system is absolutely stable if all the zeros of 1 plus g into h, that is closed loop poles of the system, are located in the left half of the S plane, okay? The system is absolutely stable if all the zeros of 1 plus g into h, that is closed loop poles of the system, are located in the left half of S plane. Then Nyquist suggested that instead of analyzing that if just a minute, yeah. Nyquist suggested that instead of analyzing the, or instead of analyzing that if all the poles are located in left half of S plane, it is better to find out only one closed loop pole or zero of 1 plus g into h lies on the right half of the S plane. Okay. So instead of finding that all the poles are located in the left half of the S plane, we'll just find that if either one closed loop pole or zero is there in the right half of the S plane, that, that makes your system unstable. Right, so he considered a path to find the stability. He considered a path called Nyquist path. Have you understood till here? Right? Fine. Fine. Now, today we are going to learn about Nyquist path. So, he suggested for that he considered a path called Nyquist path. So, instead of choosing any arbitrary path through S in S plane, Nyquist has suggested to select a toe S path which will encircle the entire right half of S plane. Okay. So what are we going to do? We are just going to find if any pole or zero lies in the right half of the S plane, then the system is unstable. So how to find it? He suggested we'll consider Nyquist path. Now what is Nyquist path? To select a toe S path which will encircle the entire right half of the S plane. Such a path so should start from plus J infinity. Okay, such a path should start from plus J infinity, which is this axis real uh, imaginary axis right 
it should be continued till s is equals to minus j infinity along imaginary axis and should be completed with a semicircle of radius infinity encircling entire right half of s plane somehow somewhat like this we suggested that we, a nyquist path should be considered to find the stability of a system how by understanding if any of the poles or zeros lie, lies in the right half of the s plane that the system is unstable now he suggested how to draw nyquist path nyquist path which is known as to s should encircle entire right half of the s plane okay it should encircle entire right half of the s plane then such a path should start from s is equals to j infinity you know that j infinity means it is imaginary axis so any point at infinity, this point is at infinity at positive imaginary axis okay so such a path should start from s is equals to plus j infinity it should be continued till s is equals to minus j infinity along the imaginary axis and should be completed with a semicircle of radius infinity so what is the radius of the semicircle can you tell me all of you please respond what is the radius of the semicircle yeah tell me infinity okay so he suggested that a a uh, path should start from plus j infinity this is a point at infinity assuming that this is a point at infinity it should complete at minus j infinity forming a semicircle and the radius of the semicircle is infinity that means we are assuming that this path covers entire right half we are assuming that this path encircles the entire right half of the s plane okay understood till this point see yes sir see yes sir yes ankit i can't hear you have you understood yes ma'am okay now this path is called nyquist path and should not be changed except small modifications while while we are analyzing the stability of any given system okay now what we are going to do map all the points on the nyquist path into f plane now we are going to map all the points on the nyquist path into f plane with the help of mapping function 1 plus g into h to get to dash s locus the mapped locus obtained in f plane by mapping all the points on nyquist path is called nyquist plot just just listen to me as of now once we solve one numerical one problem you will understand it better okay just understand that from s plane you are going to map in f plane and how will you map you will take locus of all the points all the points on the nyquist path into f plane okay the mapped locus obtained in f plane by mapping all the points on nyquist path is called nyquist plot let us see okay now at this locus as this locus is obtained we can determine the number of encirclements of origin by nyquist plot in f plane now listen to me this is important as you have obtained this locus and the locus is nothing but your nyquist plot after obtaining the locus you can determine the number of encirclements of origin by nyquist plot in f plane that you have you have understood one point that nyquist plot is in f plane we draw nyquist plot in f plane by taking locus by mapping all the points on the nyquist path into f plane okay fine now after getting nyquist plot we have to find the number of encirclements of origin by nyquist plot now how do we find it capital n denotes encirclements of origin of f plane by nyquist plot let this value be denoted by capital n what encirclements of origin of f plane by nyquist plot 
as per mapping theorem these encirclements must satisfy the equation now what is the equation n is equal to z minus p have you understood till this point if you have any doubts you ask me okay whatever is required for your knowledge as per the syllabus as per the scope of syllabus we are trying to learn nyquist plot accordingly okay so just focus on what i am saying if you have any doubt in that you ask me clear everyone okay so capital n denotes encirclements of origin as it is clear encirclement means how many times origin is encircled of f plane by nyquist plot as per the mapping theorem this encirclement must satisfy the equation that means capital n should be equal to z minus p now as n and p are known why because from graph you can get n and p are known to you we can get z now what is z z is the number of zeros of 1 plus g into h encircled by nyquist path in s plane number of zeros of 1 plus g into h encircled by nyquist path in s plane but as nyquist path encircles only right half of s plane right so z is number of zeros of 1 plus g into h which are located in the right half of s plane okay for absolute stability how many number of zeros should be there in the right half of s plane not a single zero right all the zeros should be in the left half for stability right so for absolute stability no zero should be there in right half of the s plane that means what should be the ideal value of z the ideal value of z should be zero for stability so like the stability criteria is obtained by substituting zero that is equal to zero in this equation so you get capital n is equal to minus p that means equal stability criteria states that for absolute stability of the system it states that for absolute stability of the system the number of encirclements of new origin of f plane by nyquist plot must be equal to number of poles of 1 plus g into h that is poles of g into h which are in the why because one poles of 1 plus g into h is equals to poles of g into h which are in the right half of s plane and in clockwise direction you want me to explain this again or have you understood this all of you respond what tell me mom yeah everyone fine so yes so you have understood that your you have understood that this is your nyquist plot which starts from j infinity and set minus j infinity it encircles it encircles entire right half of s plane now you have also understood that after using the theorem it has to satisfy this equation but since z should be zero so the number of encirclements of origin is equals to minus p where p is what is p here Can you tell me what is p? Yeah. 
I have written here. Nyquist stability criteria states that for absolute stability of the system, the number of encirclements of new origin, new origin of F plane by Nyquist plot must be equal to number of poles of 1 plus Gs, which are in the right half of S plane. What is P here? Number of poles of 1 plus Gh or Gh, which are in the right half of S plane and in clockwise direction. Clear? N should be equal to minus of P. P is the number of poles of 1 plus G into H or G into H, which are in the right half of the S plane in clockwise direction. Now, in all the problems which we are solving, which we are going to solve, capital N is the number of encirclements of a critical point. Since we don't have, we can't just take infinity as a point and solve it. Right? Right. We can just understand it, but practically we can't take infinity as a point and solve it. So in all the problems, what we are solving, we take n is the number of encirclements of a critical point minus 1 plus j0 and not the encirclements of origin as mapping function used is g into h and not the function 1 plus g into h. Right? So for all the problems, capital N is not the encirclement of origin. It is encirclement of a critical point minus 1 plus j0. Why? Because the mapping function used is not gh, it is 1 plus gh. So what we are going to do? We are just 1 plus gh instead of take c. If you take g into h, the point which is encircled is origin. But if you take 1 plus g into h, the point which is encircled is minus 1 plus j0. Just this one is coming to right hand side. So it becomes minus 1 plus j0. Read, to the, read it carefully. Capital N is the number of encirclements of a critical point, minus 1 plus j0, not the encirclements of origin. Why? Because the mapping function used is not g into h, but it is 1 plus g into h. I hope I am clear till this point. I hope I'm clear till this point. Yes, ma'am. Everyone? Don't worry, I will explain you. Don't worry, I will explain you. It as easy as possible. Don't worry. Done? So we'll proceed to next step that is Nyquist path. So, Nyquist path if the function has Nyquist path says if the function has poles at origin or poles on the imaginary axis right? Try to understand if the function has poles at origin or poles on the imaginary axis then Nyquist path cannot be selected along the imaginary axis passing through region. Yes or no? Can you explain this? Why?
any one of you read it properly and then try to an analyze seeing on right hand side no hmm but the pole will be on the horizon no ma'am how can we find it is left or right uh, so how can we comment on the stability so how can we comment on the stability because as of now we have understood that because as of now we have understood that the nyquist path covers the entire right half of his plane but what if if your poles are at origin or on the imaginary axis right what well said ankit correct answer so because mapping theorem states that every point on the nyquist path function must be analytic right what is your mapping theorem that n should be equal to minus p that means you consider all the poles which right lie on the right hand side of the s plane right but at its poles can't be anal analyzed but in this situation when your poles are at origin or on the imaginary axis they are actually not on the left half not on the right half but they are at the origin or on the imaginary axis so you can't analyze your nyquist path you can't analyze the stability of the system for this particular case so in such a case nyquist path is modified okay in such a case nyquist path is modified in such a way to bypass these poles by selecting semi circles of radius tending to 0 around them but still encircling entire right half of s plane okay listen to me carefully in such a case where your poles lie on origin or on the imaginary axis your nyquist path is modified how it is modified to bypass these poles by selecting semi circles of radius tending to 0 around them see radius tending to zero means a very small radius semicircle around them not exactly at them but just close to them around them right but still encircling the entire right half of s plane right so depending on the situation of poles of g into h nyquist path should be selected clear or do you have any doubt is that clear you should tell me if you have any doubts otherwise we'll move forward yeah we will be taking definitely we'll be taking example ankit obviously first we will understand the concept and then obviously we will be going for example but it is difficult to take example for each small case just understand the entire concept of nyquist plot and we will be solving this problems for entire nyquist plot maybe in tomorrow's class but before solving the problem 
you have to understand the concept, the steps. Okay. So I can see now as of now, no problem. So we'll proceed. So try to be attentive. Try to attend tomorrow's class. Tomorrow we'll be solving two problems. We have two hours, uh, not tomorrow, right? We have class on Thursday. We have two hours. So we'll be solving two problems on my quiz plot. The both the problems, if you solve, you can solve any given problem. So that will be the end of our portions. Fine. Just a minute. I'll just stop sharing this and uh, start sharing with uh, another document. Ankit, are you convinced? Now let us take one example to understand it. Okay. Depending on the situation of poles, Nyquist pass should be selected. This you have understood. Now there are some guidelines. There are some guidelines for selection of Nyquist path. So first let us understand the guidelines, then we'll take one example. Is that clear? Now let FS has two poles on the imaginary axis. Okay, at plus minus j omega 1 while one pole at origin. Okay, so let function fs has two poles on the imaginary axis. Where are the two poles? At plus j omega 1 and minus j omega 1 while one pole be at origin. The Nyquist path should be selected as shown in the figure. Okay, now for selecting Nyquist path, we will assume few points. The points by which the path is modified are plus j omega 1 listen to me carefully plus j omega 1 plus okay so you have your pole at j omega 1 but we have selected two points plus j omega 1 plus so that is a point just above j omega 1 very very close to plus j omega 1 also we have selected plus j omega 1 minus that is a point very very close to plus j omega 1 but just below it okay Clear? So we have taken an example where we are assuming that there are two points on the imaginary axis and one point is at origin. Now, how the Nyquist pass should be selected for such case? So uh, for j omega 1, the first point on imaginary axis, we'll assume that there are two points very, very close to it. One is plus j omega 1 plus the point above it, plus j omega 1 minus the point just below it. Okay. And the point just below it and we are going just okay so now mapping of these sections in f plane can be achieved by drawing the polar plots for various sections by shortcut method i'll be explaining you the shortcut methods in next class how do we draw these with the help of polar plots okay mm -hmm. so we can divide entire Nyquist path in few sections okay so your section one starts at plus g omega I hope it is clear the first pole is at g omega and you have selected two points the second point is at minus g omega and you have taken two points minus g omega 1 plus and minus g omega 1 minus omega 1 plus means the point just above it and minus means the point just below it 
the point which is at origin again you have taken two points very very close to the point at origin plus j0 and minus j0 okay right and the final nyquist path is from plus j infinity to minus j infinity whose radius is infinity so as i told you that for the points which are on the origin or on the imaginary axis what do we do the points which are on the origin or on the imaginary axis we bypass these poles by selecting semicircles of radius tending to zero around them but still encircling entire right half of s plane so what we have done here we have taken a, a semicircle of radius tending to zero around them okay so this is the point we've taken two points very very close to them and we have taken a semicircle of radius tending to zero around them for the second point again we have taken the two points very very close to j minus j omega 1 and taken a semicircle radius tending to zero around it and for the third one also we have done the same thing taken a semicircle tending to zero around it also we have taken the nyquist path which covers the entire right half of the s plane with radius tending to infinity we have divided the entire path into two sections section one starting point is plus j infinity ending point is plus j omega 1 plus as you can see here so this is your section one right the comment is it is along the imaginary axis we have taken section two which starts from plus j omega 1 plus and set plus j omega 1 minus this what is the comment here that your plot is a semicircle radius tending to zero the third section is it starts from plus j omega 1 minus 2 plus j omega 1 plus 2 plus j 0 and the plot is along the imaginary axis for the next one plus j 0 to minus j 0 and the comment is along the semicircle of radius tending to 0 for the next plot section 5 it is from minus j 0 to minus j omega 1 plus and the plot is along imaginary axis for the next section that is section Six, the plot is from minus j omega 1 plus 2 minus j omega 1 pi minus and the comment is radius tending to 0 a semicircle for the section 7 from minus j omega 1 minus 2 minus j infinity and the plot is along the imaginary axis and finally the eighth section is from minus j infinity to plus j infinity and along a semicircle of radius infinity so we have divided the entire plots in eight sections you understand till this point today. Tomorrow, we'll just come to a conclusion, write the steps to solve Nyquist criteria, and we'll solve two problems. Do you have any doubt? Please respond. We are falling short of time. No, understood. Do you want? Uh, was I very fast when explaining this plot, or you have understood the sections, different sections? Please unmute and respond. If it has to be one way, then I can just record my video and then it has to be an interactive session. Understood, everyone, these sections? Okay. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to share these notes with you. You just study well and then tomorrow definitely will understand the problems two problems on thursday you please tell everyone to attend thursday's class it is important we will be solving problems based on nyquist plot you don't need anything just pen and paper and calculator nothing else fine others have also understood abhinay abhirak Abhishek, Anjali, Apurva, I'm assuming all of them are absent. They are just, they have muted and gone somewhere. Balaji, Kundana, Chandana, Chandramohan, Damini, Dinesh, Sparzin, Vishnu, Gaurav, Gautam, Grishma, Indrajit, Ankit, Sandeep, 
Yamini, Manideep, yes, ma Manisha, okay. yes, ma'am, Pranita, okay, Manisha, Preeti, Swati, Satya Manoj, ma'am, Preeti, okay, Preeti, so hardly five to six, yeah, I, I know, appreciate. Hardly six to seven students are present out of 30 participants. Out of 30. Yeah, somebody would have told you that ma'am is calling your name. So just unmute and say. Fine, fine, fine. Okay, no issues. So uh, you have to be attentive. See, if you are not attending the class later on, you should not complain that you have not understood. It is your choice that you have chosen not to understand. That's the reason you're not attending the class. Make sure you attend Thursday's class. Okay. And those who have not submitted assignments, submit your assignment. It is already late. Those who have just posted assignment in Google Classroom, no, it won't be considered. You have to post the assignment in classwork in the folder, assignment folder under classwork. You can do it. Okay, I'll just cross check those who have submitted in Google Classroom and now uploaded in Google Classwork. For them, no marks will be deducted. Do it today. Fine. Thank you.